meeting. Um, we are recording the meeting so that we can share this remote phone bank training with some of our other activists uh, that can't be online with us tonight, but that wanna help us um, with the legislative session in 2017, in particular for our environmental priorities. So I'm going to turn off my webcam and switch to a presentation that gives you some details on what exactly the Environmental Priorities Coalition is. And some of you might be um, stand up to oil volunteers as well. Tonight we are gonna be calling on a super important environmental priority, um, the Oil Transportation Safety Bill. So who are the Environmental Priorities Coalition? We are a group of over 20 mostly environmental organizations that work together to build power for the environment. If you want to check us out online, um, you can find us there. I'll send out the link, but about 20 years ago, we used to get pitted against each other as environmental organizations. Um, the muralette people would want to win their battle and the, the fish people would want to win their battle. And we got super smart and decided that if we worked in coalition together um, and agreed before legislative session on a couple key pieces that we either needed to protect or pass during Washington state legislative session, um, we would um, have a much better chance at winning. So we have three environmental priorities uh, for 2017. The first one is water for people, farms, and fish. The second one is oil transportation safety. And the third is reducing toxic pollution in all communities. Um, when we do our phone bank training, we provide a briefing on whichever priority we are calling on. So we'll do that tonight for our um, oil transportation safety uh, priority. And we also walk folks through how to do our calling. One of the things that we want you to keep in mind is that uh, having one-on-one -on -one conversations with voters on the phone is one of the best ways to identify our supporters. So as volunteers, um, sometimes people get a little nervous when they think about talking to strangers in person or on the phone. But one of the great things that I like to think about is um, when you are talking to a person over the phone or in real life, even if they're a stranger, this is a great way for you to identify other like-minded people. Because even though when we're sitting at home watching the crazy news stream about Trump and whatever <laughs> ridiculous thing he did today, we might feel pretty isolated. That's um, a tactic that the, the other side uses is to try and overwhelm us. But I can guarantee that we are not alone in this um, fight and in caring about the environment. Uh, and we just need to get out and talk to people and we will very quickly find uh, other people that agree with us. When we are doing our phone banking, we use targeting to select likely supporters. So trust me, we're not going to take our best volunteers uh, and have you call people that we think are gonna argue with you. We try and find people that are the best voters and that are most likely environmentalists and care about protecting um, murelets and clean drinking water and making sure that everybody has clean air to breathe. So we are going to set you up for success and try and pick the best people um, for you to talk to on the phones. And volunteers like you are the best way for us to inform and inspire voters. Um, you get a lot of credit with people on the phone when they hear that you're a volunteer because they know that you took your evening and you are sitting in our office and calling through hundreds of people trying to spread the word about these really important environmental issues. So uh, it's a wonderful way to make a very human connection. 
and it totally works. We've had such great success. Uh, we've only been doing two, uh, we've had two phone banks so far in 2017, but we've had really great success getting people to contact their legislators. 40% of the people that our volunteers talk to on the phone agree to call their legislator, uh, about 15% transfer right away, and the remainder agree to call them the next day um, after they get a little bit more information from us. So it's a super effective way to um, reach out to voters and then get our elected officials to hear our voice and to know that when we are voting, we want them to consider the environment when they go to Olympia. So before we go on from here, does anybody have questions on the Environmental Priorities Coalition or the three environmental priorities for 2017? If you do, go ahead and type those questions in the chat box. And again, these are our priorities for 2017. We have water for people, farms and fish, oil transportation safety, and reducing toxic pollution in all communities. When we pick priorities, what that means is we will invest staff time, people power, grassroots organizing into creating great legislation, trying to put bills through um, the state uh, house of representatives or the state senate. And sometimes we wanna fend off really bad bills that also come our way. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any questions. So um, the next step is for us to actually go through and talk about what it means to understand a priority. So I sent this out to folks, and if you did not get it, I will email everybody uh, later this evening after our phone bank. We have a script and a one-pager that we share with all of our volunteers every time we do a phone bank. And this one pager is going to give you some basic details on the topic that we are talking about and whether it's a House bill or a Senate bill. In the case of oil transportation safety, we have both a House bill and a Senate bill. Uh, actually, today, I was in Olympia. They had the Senate hearing on this bill, um, which was held by Doug Erickson, who I don't know <laughs> if y'all are familiar with Doug. You probably are. He's been absent a lot from his duties as head of the chair of the Environment Committee in the Senate because he's been Trump's uh, most likely pick for some EPA positions. But we've been getting after him on that, and he was in the Senate today. And because Doug Erickson is not a great champion for the environment, most likely in the Senate, this bill isn't going to go anywhere. So on the House side, it's really important that the legislators hear from their constituents that we really want to move House Bill 1611 um, out of committee and take it to a floor vote. There's a couple of really key pieces that are part of this bill that we want to first educate ourselves about and then boil it down to some bite-sized snippets so that we can share with people over the phone. When we do our phone bank briefings, we always give you, our volunteers, the best and most detailed information because we want you to feel prepared to answer any questions, but also just to have a thorough understanding of uh, the issue and the legislation that we're talking about. So um, this one pager has a lot of details. I'm going to give you some higher level uh, information. One thing to know is back in 2014, they did pass kind of part one of oil transportation safety. However, there were some key provisions that were cut out 
at the last minute by our favorite guy, uh, Doug Erickson. He was up for election and he had a pretty tough fight. So he wanted to be seen as like having some kind of environmental checkbox win. So he cut out a lot of the really great parts of the Oil Transportation Safety Act um, that had to protect Puget Sound that made the funding long term, not just short term and didn't address pipeline safety at all. Um, so by watering down the bill, he was able to check that box and say, hey, I took action. Well, one of the pieces that he left out was funding and financial responsibility. They did a one time uh, setting aside of money to pay for uh, protection, both on the marine side and prevention, but it was only set to last for about a two year period of time. So this current version of the Oil Transportation Safety Bill, House Bill 1611, is written so that we can update the barrel tax and we can provide reliable ongoing funding for oil spill prevention and oil transportation safety. And it's something that we can rely on year after year. It also means that the corporations that move the oil through Washington have enough money or insurance to pay for an oil spill or accident. Uh, I don't know if you have heard about the Mosier oil train explosion that happened on the Oregon side of the Columbia River last year, but Washington State Department of Ecology ended up paying a large portion of the cleanup because we have really great protections uh, and uh, response in place. However, we wanna make sure that we continue to respond to new threats. One of the biggest things that's changed since 2014 has been the lifting of the oil uh, export ban. So now we have all these refineries in Washington state, existing refineries where they could potentially export even more oil because it doesn't have to stay here at home anymore. So because of that, we have increased marine protections uh, that we want to pass through House Bill 1611. And we want to direct Washington State to adopt rules to protect Puget Sound from that increased threat of barge traffic, in particular from uh, new exports of oil out of Washington State. And then also improve transparency and decision making um, when an existing oil facility wants to change from importing crude to exporting oil. So those provisions are not in place and they weren't as dire. They weren't even something they needed to consider in 2014. Um, finally, pipeline safety is becoming more and more of an issue as public demands that we take oil trains off of the railroads that run through our communities that oil companies want to run more oil through the pipelines. And the Kinder Morgan pipeline has just been approved uh, in Canada. They want to bring a pipeline across the U.S. border into Whatcom County, which would be a huge increase of oil coming into Washington state. So we want to make sure that there's a fair review and a public input on projects uh, when they want to build a new pipeline or expand capacity on existing pipelines. So these are some of the details that we want you, the volunteers, to know about this bill. There's three key things that it does. It provides funding um, that will be long-term and lasting, and it makes sure that the corporations that are transporting the oil uh, will pay for cleanup and prevention. There's marine protections that are increased, and then there's pipeline safety and also an increase in transparency where public gets a chance to have input. So I think this is another great chance to uh, take questions. What I'm going to do is allow you to chat in the chat box, but I'm also going to um, take folks off of mute. So if anybody has a question, you now have either an open mic or an open phone line if you wanna ask a question about the bill.
or you can type it in the chat box. <laughs> we'll give it 10 more seconds. What is the most important thing about the bill, in your opinion? Great question, Great question Marianne. Um, I would say the most important thing about this bill is that it gives the public an opportunity to provide input and forces increased transparency by the oil companies and the refineries when they want to increase their capacity or change their facilities um, to export oil from Washington State because right now they don't need to necessarily get public input because they are existing facilities. So um, this bill would make sure that if they want to make these changes, they have to get public input. And I just think that that's so important in this day and age that we make sure that these companies that are moving this really uh, toxic and potentially volatile commodity are having to be held accountable to the public. Anybody else have a question? All right, if you do, uh, at any time, go ahead and ping me in the chat box. Um, here are just a couple other uh, uh, talking points that uh, are shared in the script, which I will email you tonight. Uh, completion of the Kinder Morgan Pipeline, that's the Trans-Canada Pipeline that will come into Whatcom County, would increase vessel traffic in the Salish Sea by seven times. Um, pipelines are used more and more, yet there aren't any key protections for communities and waterways. And I would tell you, as someone who lived in Bellingham, when we had the Pipeline explosion, it was a natural gas pipeline that killed three people. Uh, I think it was 1999. It was terrifying. And it really damaged our community. There was so much fear and so much um, heartache because several of the people that died were very young people. And most of us, myself included, didn't even know we had a pipeline running through our community. Um, another great talking point is that this bill will strengthen oversight and put in place protections for Puget Sound and also require more public input into pipeline construction. Um, House Bill 1611 ensures the oil industry pays in the case of oil spill or other disaster, and it updates and stabilizes the funding for prevention, preparedness, and response to oil spill. So that's our briefing on the topic when we are doing a phone bank, we provide you with a script, but by no means do you need to read the script word for word. The script is a great tool for you, gives you some guidelines, but really what we want you to remember is that you're having a conversation with another human being. So there's a general template to any script and you introduce yourself as a volunteer, you give a one sentence quick description of the issue and ask the person on the line if they've heard about it. Because we don't want to just talk to them. We want to have a conversation. We want to invite them to talk to us. And then very quickly, because most of these folks um, are going to give you about 30 to 60 seconds to talk to them, we're very transparent ourselves. We tell them that we want them to call their representative on a specific issue and ask them if they can do that especially on this oil transportation issue. We're calling into the 40th Legislative District, which is Skagit and Whatcom County and a little bit of San Juan County. Those folks really care about this issue. This is going to be a new pipeline in their backyard. And so we've got a lot of folks that really care about this. Um, and they will either say, yes, they want to call right away, or maybe send me some information. I can call in the morning. Every once in a while you get somebody who says no, but that's okay. Again, we're trying to target um, who our supporters are and get them to hold their legislative elected officials accountable. So what I'm going to do next is take you to CallFire. We have a really great system in place 
to contact voters. We've targeted who the best green voters are, the people that are most likely to care about this issue and want to take action. And we've loaded them into this cool website where it's going to allow us to call without actually having to dial the phone. And it makes it super easy for you to um, make a lot of connections very quickly. So after the webinar tonight, I'll send you a link where you'll get invited to create an account. So I am going to create an account with my Gmail. It's super easy. You click that button. And then I am going to log in. So I apologize that you get to watch me <laughs> actually log into the account, but this is what it will be like for you. I want you to have kind of a real time, real world experience. So there are two different legislative districts that we're going to be calling into. Um, we're going to start with the 40th legislative district. So that again is, hang on, I'm going to add my account real quickly. The 40th is Whatcom County, uh, San Juan County, and Skagit County. And one thing that you should know is that they also have existing refineries in Skagit County. And so this has made it a hot button issue for their representative. The representative in the 40th is named Jeff Morris. And because he has refineries, he felt that he needed to um, be an obstacle in the 2014 Oil Transportation Safety Act. He felt like he couldn't, and he, he would just have too many people that would be upset if he supported this issue. So um, we want to call his constituents and have Jeff Morris's constituents tell him, hey, actually, we want you to be our champion, and we really want you to vote yes on House Bill 1611 and get it out of committee and actually to the floor for a vote. So um, I'm going to show you a couple things about Call Fire. Right now I'm on the screen. When you get into your Call Fire account, we're going to go to this settings tab and it gives you an opportunity to update your phone number. So I am going to update the phone number that I'm calling with tonight. Don't worry, the people on the other line will see my work phone. They will not see uh, your phone number. And then this button here is super important. This uh, set your hold music. Uh, it's important because there's all kinds of great music, and by great, I'm being slightly sarcastic. It's all pretty awful, but um, it's it's good to know how to change it. Don't put it on silent. If you put it on silent, then you don't know when you're about to get a call. Then you have to like log out to get your updated music. So right now, I just logged back in. And you can see this right here, the 40th LD Phone Bank Oil 131. So we started this phone bank earlier this week, and we have about 330 calls that are remaining, and we want to get to the rest of those uh, people in the 40th Legislative District. So, and if at any time when you are first getting involved in Call Fire, if you are um, nervous before you talk to people, you can always click on this training session, the start campaign right here. So I am going to go jump right in to this 40th LD Priorities phone bank. I'm going to click the join campaign button. And in just a second, you will hear uh, my phone ring. And my phone is going to call me. Oh, it's on. It's on silent. But anyway, my phone just rang. 
So I'm answering the phone and I'm going to put it on speaker. I don't know if you can hear my cheesy uh, hold music, but actually this is pretty good. This is the Four Seasons. Um, so once I join the campaign, don't worry, you're not going to immediately have a person that you need to talk to. It's going to pull up the script. So again, I'll send you out a copy of the script, but I want you to see it here. It's always going to be right in front of you. Hi, my name is Kat and I'm a volunteer with the Environmental Priorities Coalition. So again, it gives you um, your, bio, your volunteer name, who you're calling with, and then a question because we want to have a conversation. I'm calling tonight because oil transportation safety is up for debate this week in the state legislature. Have you heard about the oil pipeline they want to build from Canada into Washington state? So great question. It's informative. It gives them a chance to think about it and real quickly let them know that you're calling about something about the environment and about the government. And then the next chunk after they respond, it gives you a little bit of a blurb, just a little bit more information. Um, and the ask. We want to put the ask up front. We know these folks don't want to be on the phone with us for 30 minutes. So we want to be very transparent ourselves. Will you please call your representative, Jeff Morris, and tell him you want him to take action today to keep our communities and waterways safe from oil spills and such disasters. Now this is where the script branches. So you have a couple options here. If they say yes, perfect. We've got their ask right there. If they say maybe, we have a couple of bullet points that we can share. And then we have our ask again, will you call your representative? If they say they want to call tomorrow or if they still want more information, then we can take their email. Some people will give you their um, home address, that's fine. And uh, we'll send them more information tomorrow. Or you can just share their phone number. Our goal is multi-tiered, so number one, we want to educate the voters out there that this is happening. Number two, we want to have them call their elected officials. And then number three, we want to try and collect information so we can share a little bit more detail so we can hopefully get them engaged and involved as volunteers and activists just like you. And then as we continue to scroll down our screen, there's a couple questions. Will you call your representative? Yes, no, maybe. Wants more information, enter their address, and then a call result. If you talk to a person, conversation, if it's a wrong number, uh, if refused means they don't want to talk to you, not home, if they've moved, or if, it's just, if someone has passed away. And then if you have other notes that you need to share with me, you can enter them down there. Like, so-and-so works for the... Uh, Skagit County Council and thinks that this is a really important issue. Will you send them more information so that they can share it with their coworkers? Um, that's a great thing to share in the note box. Okay, before I begin dialing, uh, anybody want to ask any questions? I'm going to take some live calls so that you can see what call fire looks like um, and so you can have that experience. And one of the things that I sometimes forget <laughs> to remind my volunteers about is that you'll spend a lot more time kind of on hold than you will talking to people. So remember to breathe, that's okay, let's see. So Holly asks, how do they get connected to Representative Morris? That's a really great question. So I will explain and then I can type it as well. If they want to get connected to Representative Morris, there's going to be a button right up here that says transfer. And so you click that button. Uh, if you'll notice here, it says click through twice. You'll click the transfer button and then there will be a confirm. It says transfer to Representative Morris. And then you'll click that button one more time and it will automatically send it to Representative Morris. And because it's late, um, it'll most likely be a voicemail that comes up. So in the morning, their staffer will come in, and then they will get um, lots of voicemails. Let's see. 
And then Sally asks, are you anticipating that they will call them right away? Will they have to leave a voicemail message? Most likely they will leave a voicemail message. We would love for folks to transfer and have that call patched through right away. And it's great if they want to leave a voicemail message. Um, and we're going to feed them the information. Please tell Representative Morris that you're a voter in their district and that you want him to support Oil Transportation Safety Bill, House Bill 1611, to protect the Salish Sea from oil spills. Um, you can keep it pretty simple or you can give them uh, the full sentence ensure refineries don't become terminals and stabilize funding for spill prevention. Uh, like I said, most of the time uh, you can let folks on the voters on the line know that it will be a voicemail that they get. Um, if it's a human being, it's really not much different. Uh, you just tell them your name and you tell them like what city that you're calling from and what it is that you want them to know. When I call, I like to ask for a phone call or an email back. So does that answer folks' questions? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I am going to click the begin dialing button and my phone will remain on hold until I get a live caller. There are potentially two people that will pick up, Susan or Elizabeth. And if they don't pick up, there's a pre-recorded message that gets left. And it tells them all about the house bill. Now I've got Karen and Krissa that may potentially come up next. If people don't answer, then it just goes through to the next one. The reason we have two potential lines going is because a lot of people don't answer their phones. <laughs> so this increases our chances of getting a human being. This is also why you keep... Hi, may I speak to Alice, please? Okay, so I have a voicemail. I'm going to hit this button. It says Smart Drop. And so that will automatically leave the message. So I didn't get to talk to Alice, but the person that answered the phone, I'm going to make sure that they get a message about this. Um, when it picks up, you'll see that this top screen changes and there was a little transfer button here. Now I'm going to hit next call. So David or Evan. Oh. David hung up on me. If at any time you need to take a break, you just hit that little take a break button. And when you're ready, to, like if you want to go get a sip of water or your kid has a question on their homework, uh, and then you click the resume button. Don't hang up the phone, though. Keep the phone on the line. So Margaret or Mary. Like I said, sometimes the hardest part about phone banking is the waiting. So I have a voicemail. We've got the smart drop. This is the transfer button. I'm going to hit that smart drop. Next call. Boom. So I'm looking at Rebecca or Brett. Hi, may I speak to Rebecca, please? So that was another voicemail. Uh, we have on the right side, 
name, age, gender, all of this is from the, the voting file, which is public record. So sometimes people will ask how you get their phone number and you can tell them it's um, from the voting file and that it's public record. Usually you don't get that question, but every once in a while. I'm going to end the session here and answer some questions. So I see that Eileen had a question. Mm -hmm. Let me, my chat, there we go. If they don't answer, does their name get placed back in circulation so they might get called again? Great question, Eileen. Um, not sure if this happens, but what if they tell us that they have a friend, family member they'd like us to call? Oh, um, so two-part question from Eileen. If they have a friend or family member that they would like us to call, I would uh, record that in the notes section so that uh, most likely me, the organizer, and we wouldn't make the volunteer do that, can give them a call. Um, or you can tell them that you're going to forward them some email information. They could share that either way. Um, and yes, if they don't answer, their name does get circulated back in. Um, there's a 30 to 60 minute window, depending on how many phone numbers we have to get through, um, that we, we have it wait 30 to 60 minutes before their phone number does get cycled through. In general, in one evening, we only try making one call attempt. Most of the folks that are in our list tonight are people that didn't pick up or we attempted to call them on Tuesday and we just didn't get through. Are there other questions before we try one more round with call fire? You know, let's, I think what we'll do um, is give it one more chance. And if we don't uh, get a live human being on the phone, I'm going to call uh, Ariane and we'll do a role play. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk you through Call Fire one more time. I'm gonna click the Join Campaign button. And it's going to call my phone. So I am answering my phone. Okay, I'm going to go straight ahead into begin dialing. And I have either Dave or Carl potentially coming online. You know, what we could do is I can unmute you one at a time and I can role play with each of you. That would be exciting. Ann or Josh. We'll let it cycle through one more round of numbers and then I'll take calls with you all. That'll be fun. <laughs> Hi, may I speak to Anne, please? Okay, um, uh, may I talk to you? I'm a volunteer with the Environmental Priorities Coalition, and I just wanted to let you know that there's some super important um, oil transportation safety um, legislation that's up for debate this week in the legislature. Have you heard about the pipeline that they want to build um, from Canada into Washington? Yeah, um, so Washington faces a an increase of seven times uh, the amount of oil that's being transported um, out of Washington State if they build the Kinder Morgan pipeline. 
And so there's a really important piece of legislation and we would like you to call your representative, Jeff Morris, and tell him that what you want him to take action to keep our communities and our waterways safe from oil spills. Would you be willing to uh, make a call tonight? I can do a quick transfer and it takes about 60 seconds. Well, unfortunately, we don't get the deciding power on the pipeline. What this bill would do would make it that such that um, the corporations that transport oil through Washington State have to either have enough money or enough insurance to pay for um, oil disaster, like oil spill cleanup, but also um, prevention and preparedness. So they would have to have enough money to invest into first responders, et cetera. It also um, has provisions in it to make sure that the public um, gets to have some say and oversight. So for example, um, refineries in Skagit, um, Skagit County, um, now that they've lifted the oil export ban, have the option of exporting um, oil out of them. Right now, they don't have to have any kind of public input if they wanna export oil. This bill, if it's passed, would force them to have to um, get public input on whether or not we want um, those refineries to export because it would be, like I said, a, it could be up to seven times as much oil passing through Washington. So what, I, what I'm asking is if uh, I could transfer you and if you could leave a message, um, we'll be contacting Representative Jeff Morris and we'd like for you uh, to tell him to support it's a House Bill 1611 that protects um, the Salish Sea from oil spills, ensures refineries don't become terminals, and uh, stabilizes funding for oil spills in response. Yep, the oil transportation safety bill. Cool. So what I'm going to do is transfer you over and most likely you're just going to get a voicemail and um, there will be like a pause as the transfer goes through. If you would like um, a response back, it's always a cool idea to say, hey, I'd like to get a call or an email back, um, but that's just extra credit. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to transfer you now. Thanks so much. Yay! So, I, I didn't even ask him his name. <laughs> I kind of didn't care at that point. I was just like, yeah, I got a human being. So, um, I transferred him. You saw the two clicks. I hit the transfer here and the transfer here. I'm going to click the resume button because um, I wanted to make a note that uh, it wasn't Anne that I spoke with, but I guess I need to do that before I took a pause. So we all learn. However, the great thing is at the end of the night, I get um, a record of all of the calls that were made. And so I'll be able to go through and look at the people that got transferred and I'll look for someone named Ann and I'll be able to uh, find out uh, who that person is and make a note that that wasn't actually Ann. Uh, but yeah, so it's actually super easy and people care. It's just you got to get over that quick stumble of, oh, my gosh, I'm talking to a stranger on the phone and I'm saying these really wonky things. But as you see, it wasn't even Anne. And I just said, hey, can I talk to you? Because he probably lives in that district. So um, we'll take some questions and then I can uh, maybe I can get a volunteer. We'll do one more role play. Let's see. Question. Mm -hmm. Holly Smith, did you say we don't need to use our personal phone that calling is done through the computer? So that's a really great, great question. Um, you do need a phone uh, to call unless you have one of those, I think it's called VoIP or something, um, but they don't see your phone number. So the caller ID shows up as my office phone. So it does help to have um, unlimited minutes on your phone or a landline. Okay, great. Yeah, so the phone, yeah, it calls us because we, um, 
we type our phone number in and then it calls us. But that's also how it disguises who the caller is. So most likely tomorrow I will get a bunch of uh, questions on my voicemail at work that says, hey, I got a missed number from this call. And so I get to call through and tell people about the legislation. So it's, it's actually pretty neat. Uh, do I have any volunteers who want to be unmuted and do a role play with me? <laughs> Arianne's raising her hand. All right, we'll do a role play. Arianne, you can just come and uh, sit next to me. That way they can hear us without having feed, uh, feedback. So I'm going to do a little role play with Arianne. And ring, 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 ring. <laughs> Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Kat and I'm a volunteer with the Environmental Priorities Coalition. Is Arianne available? That's me. Hey, uh, I'm calling tonight because oil transportation safety is up for debate this week in the state legislature. Have you heard about the pipeline they want to build from Canada into Washington state? What? I, know. Uh, I didn't know anything about that. Isn't Straight that crazy? Um, yeah, they want to bring it right into Whatcom County. Um, Washington faces increased pressure to become an oil transportation hub for the nation, especially with Canada uh, moving forward with this pipeline. Um, so I'm asking, will you please call your representative, Jeff Morris, and tell him you want him to take action today to keep our communities and waterways safe from oil spills and disasters. Whoa, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> what do you mean, call my representative? I don't even know what to do there. I, I totally get it. Um, and I was in your shoes when I, before I started being a volunteer, but I really care about this issue and I really care about uh, making sure we don't have any more exploding pipelines in Whatcom County. So um, what I can do is make it really easy at the click of a button, I can transfer you over and I'm going to give you um, something to say. So your representative, his name is Jeff Morris, and we want to ask you to tell him to support the oil transportation safety bill. It's House Bill 1611. Do you have maybe something that uh, you can write this stuff down with? Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I need to get something to write this down with. OK, okay cool. Okay, I got it. OK. OK, so. We want you to ask him to support the Oil Transportation Safety Bill, House Bill 1611. 1611? Correct. Okay, okay yep. I got it. And it does three things. It, if you want to leave a long message, you can tell him it protects the Salish Sea from oil spills. Okay. It ensures refineries won't become terminals. And it stabilizes funding for spill prevention and response. Spill prevention. Yep. So like oil spills that might affect the marble murelet? Yes, exactly. You know, I was at a public forum the other day and they had, unfortunately, a taxidermy murelet because it died in an oil spill. It was really sad. Whoa. I know, it was tragic. Okay, so I'm going to transfer you. It's going to take uh, maybe like five, ten seconds to, for the transfer to go through. Most likely you'll get a voicemail, but if you get a human, that's okay. You can just tell them the exact same thing. Hey, Ariane, thanks so much. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Transfer. Yay, thank you. Bye. So my lovely volunteer, Ariane, uh, was a, a great kind of semi-nervous uh, volunteer, but that happens all the time. So um, any further questions in the chat? Okay, so here is my ask for you all tonight. Um, there are some great ways for you to take action. Um, you can practice making some calls tonight, logging in for 30 minutes. Uh, I'll get your email address and um, send you the script and make sure that you have information, uh, the one pager so that you can feel confident on the topic. Uh, you can call your own representative tonight. Uh, I can send out an email that shows you how to look up your representative if you don't know who that person is. Um, or you can join us for a phone bank next week. Um, again, this is all about remote phone banking. You definitely don't need to 
uh, be here in the office with with me, even though I would love to have you here. Um, but you can call from the comfort of your own home uh, using your own computer. You just need to have uh, either unlimited minutes on your cell phone or a landline and access to the Internet. A couple other things that we could use are town hall activists. And that's really helpful. Folks agree to sign up for their uh, representatives and senators newsletters and you take note of when they're going to have their town halls and then we work with you to uh, come up with a great environmental question so that we can get your uh, representative on the record either as pro environment or as maybe a climate denier like Doug Erickson oh my goodness um, and um, bring friends because it's really important again for our elected officials I mean they're in office working for us they need to hear from us so we have uh, our town hall activists help us know when those town halls are and then show up and bring friends or if there's other ideas um, we are always looking for creative new ways to um, do outreach and to hold our elected officials accountable okay I am going to open the floor for questions and I will unmute folks if anybody wants to ask a question and I will also type my email in the box so you all can contact me Same issue and script next Tuesday. Just need to start at 5.30. So great question. Um, next week it will be, it might be this issue, um, Holly, but it might also be the water for people, farms, and fish. So we will send out, update. we're waiting to hear back from uh, the powers that be in Olympia that know when the next hearings are. So there's an oil hearing on Monday, so that's why we're doing all these calls today. Um, but the water issue might have a vote next week, so we might be calling on that. Um, at 5.30, when you uh, call in, what we would do is um, tune you into the briefing. So it would just be like doing a conference call. You'd get to hear all the information, hear us do a run through of the script, and then um, um, either Emily, our other organizer, or myself would be available to um, take your questions and help walk you through call fire. So it might be this script, but it might be um, another priority. Any other questions? All right, well, um, I wanna thank you all for taking the time tonight to sit down and watch this webinar and if you want to join in and do some calls tonight, type your name in the chat box or send me an email and I'll make sure that you get the script and we'll get you set up with a call fire account. I'll also put my cell phone number in there so you can call me if you have questions or issues with your phone calls tonight. And if you wanna join us next week, Tuesday at 5.30, we'll phone you into our briefing on whichever environmental priority. We'll make sure that you get a script and a one pager with information prior to that so you can feel prepared and confident. And um, remember to check out Ariane's Marble Muralette Survival Project uh, Facebook page. She just released some podcasts that are super cool. And we want to not only um, be mindful of these environmental priorities, but uh, help her with some of the uh, draft environmental impact statements that they're taking comment on for the Marble Muralette. So check out those cool podcasts. All right, well, thank you everybody. Have a wonderful evening and um, thanks for all you do.